matters to talk about him. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior Jesus, my Lord. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. Praise the Lord. A wonderful Savior is Jesus.
being here today. We thank the Lord for his presence that has already been here. We have quite a bit out today due to various things that's happened and others gone because it's a holiday weekend. But here we are, receiving from him and being lifted up by his presence. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh my, what a great and a wonderful God. Give that same key again and let's do it. No one ever cared for me. Hallelujah. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus since I found in him a friend so kind and true. Monday morning 
and uh, they do have a service scheduled this Saturday at uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and it will be here in the sanctuary on that Saturday, 2 o'clock this coming Saturday here in the sanctuary. And we're lifting up prayers and, and, and support to uh, Sister Cricket and her family because her mother, Sister Jenny, passed away yesterday at 515 and we are just um, lifting her to the Lord Cricket and all of her family and children and Sister Linda, that's Sister Linda's sister-in-law. And we had a lot of time with her, amen. And God's good and He's faithful, amen. amen. And she ain't hurting, hallelujah. Amen. And, and thank God for that part of it, amen. amen. We just bless the Lord, she was His, amen. amen. And she just transitioned. There she is today in a great cloud of witnesses. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And we bless them there. That We bless that cricket. That strength of an ox. I tell you, that's a woman made of iron. And God's been good to her. And he's given her supernatural strength. Amen. And when you know you've done right by your folks and the Lord, you, you, the Lord take you through it and you don't have that burden, do you? When it's over, you know that you've been with Him and He's been with you. Amen. And we bless her today. And mostly pray the Lord to give her a double rest for every hour she sleeps. Let the Lord give her an extra hour in her body. Amen. She needs that rest. And we're, we're thanking God for them. We'll let you know in the future here soon as things, uh, you know, uh, uh, unfold concerning services or whatever and we'll keep you posted and informed but in the meantime do be praying for all of these folks for God to just lift them up and strengthen them and encourage them and I think that is everything I needed to tell you so that said we'll receive tithe and the offering at this time and we thank you for your giving and support of the work of God we're doing wonderfully well on our building in the back in the fellowship hall we're to the stage of AC work, mostly before we can do any more drywall, drywall work. So anything that comes in, that's what it'll go towards. Amen is the AC. And uh, we're just thanking God for new things happening back there. And I'm very thankful. I got up this morning and I thought about how wonderful it will be when we get that done. Because when these families come in, we can host them in a lovely place and have plenty of room for all of them and bless them with a good meal and dinner. So God is helping us to get it done. Amen. And we bless you. Come and bring your gifts, if you would, to the Lord. In Jesus' name.
but he's talking about you coming to a place where it all gets settled. And how many of you are longing to walk in a place in God where everything in your heart is settled? Where your questions are answered? And where you come to a knowledge of understanding? How many know in Hebrews 6, the first part, he said uh, that we're to leave the first principles of the doctrines of Christ. And he goes through all them. Everybody say things we already know. How many believe there's some things you already know this morning? And how many know that the Lord don't mean for you to just stay in that house of things you already know? But how many believe God's calling you to explore another part of this thing? And that is to go into what you don't know. And when you know in glory, when you know in part, you can only prophesy in part and pray in part and preach in part. But when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part is done away. But how many believe that perfect part is in Jesus who is your rest? And that you can come into a place in Him where you understand you live and move and have your being. Come on now. In Him. And that all things that are in Him are yes. Glory to God. Yes and amen. There ain't no no in Him. There is no shadow of turning or no variableness. In Him is a yea and an amen. And Paul told us that we've got to get to the place where there isn't any nay when we say yea. But what did he say? Let your yea be yea. Hallelujah. Don't let there be anything in you that draws back. We are not of them that draw back under perdition. Come on, somebody. Something's got to be settled in us. And that's what rest is. It's when you come into a place, oh, praise the Lord, where you understand fully. When I was a child, I spake like a child. Now, what's the next line say? I understood like a child. But when I become a man, Oh, praise the Lord. What did I do? I put away. Well, wouldn't it just be lovely to come in your house, you grown folks, and you get the rattle and the top, spinning top, and get down in the floor. <laughs> Hallelujah, and play with it. We might be ready to have you examined a little bit. Can you say amen? And how many know in the spirit realm and this the body of Christ, we don't have to get to a point where we don't praise the Lord. Where when things are going on that require our attention and most of all our anointing. That instead of us running back to them same old toys, them first principles, stuff we already know. What if somebody pulls out a new weapon, a new tool of understanding. Well, are you wanting to get that? You believe you're there in Him, but I'm talking about walking it out in this earth. And so He said the remedy of that is to go on to what? Perfection. Perfection. Well, we're not talking about sinless perfection in the sense that you do everything that's on the church creed wall. We're talking about coming into maturity. Getting old enough, oh glory to God, that the Father can talk to you like a grown son. What did Jesus say? What did, what did the Spirit say through Jesus? This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Glory to God. Unto us a child is born. Was a son born? No. A child was born. But unto us, well, glory to God, a son is what? Given. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. I don't like it any more than you. But you're being forced and I am too out of our little comfort zone. God's pushing us out of the nest. 
Oh, we're his sweet little eaglets, but we're going to have to become a roaring, soaring. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the Lord said, you got to go on to perfection. Thou art my son, another place said, this day. Hallelujah. Do you understand that that day ain't got nothing to do with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or a certain time of the month. But that day, oh, praise the Lord, is a day that existed before there ever was time in the earth. Come on, somebody. And then Jesus got in on talking about that day. In that day, you shall ask me nothing. Well, glory to God. You don't have to ask Him when you're praying as Him. You shall ask me nothing. But what did He say do? It was in the name, wasn't it? What? Glory. I'm trying to stay on course, but I'm feeling a little jumping going on in there. And that day you shall ask me nothing. But whatsoever you shall ask in my name. That's the same as him doing the asking. I think we're still separated a little bit in our thinking. We're praying through Him to get to another source again, and it don't work that way. Whatever you ask in my name. Now, you may or may not can handle this, but either way, it's equally as true. The Greek word there for ask means demand. Whatever you demand in my name, that will I do. Now, come on and tell the rest of that the Father Woo, may be what? Glorified where? In the Son. Now, do you believe that Son he's talking about was just that singular, fleshly manifestation of a 33 and a half year old human being? Or do you believe you're a part of that Sonship in this hour? And that every time you demand in his name, there is a glorification. Praise the Lord. Why the Father moves through you to get the work done. To get the job done. Is anybody with me so far? Jesus said in that day, woo, glory to God, you shall know that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. Hallelujah. He said in that day, all that are in the grave Oh, yes. Now, we think a grave is dirt and square and six foot. But you got to understand when Jesus talked about the grave, he is talking about the flesh a lot of the time. Because he said that to the Pharisees, you're like a white wash what? Sepulcher. But inside, you're full of dead men's bones. In other words, he said this. You run a ministry? You got a church? I'm not trying to be offensive. I just want truth to be told. You got a system? It runs. It operates. But it ain't got no power. It don't produce no results. That's what he meant when he said full of dead men bones. And how many know that there has to be a resurrection from that grave? A form of godliness. Well, yes. but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Do you understand that if the church don't have power, it ain't the church? Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. If the church don't have prayer, it ain't the church. Right. If the church don't lay hands on the sick and see them recover, then it ain't a New Testament church. And Jesus said, you are whitewashed, but you're full of dead men's bones. Well, glory to God. But I'm thankful the Lord said in Isaiah, thy dead body shall live again. Thy dead men shall live again. Together with my body shall they rise. Hallelujah. One day I'll get to my text here. But you do understand what I'm saying. 
Jesus said, In that day all that are where? In the grave. Now while was Lazarus in the grave? What happened to him? He come out. But the grave was still in him. He was bound hand and foot with grave clothing. What is grave clothes? Religion. Mindsets of operation that are against the life of God. Did Jesus loose him? No, sir. He turned and told his disciples, Loose him? Come on now. And do what? Let him go. Well, glory. Saved? Yes. Filled with the Holy Ghost? Sure, because he couldn't have been resurrected if it wasn't the Holy Ghost. But still bound up in traditionalism and still afraid to go out on a limb. Hello, church. And believe for God to do the inevitable and the impossible. So what do you got to do to that man? Loose him and let him go. And Jesus said in John 5, in that day, all that are in the grave are going to do what? Hear something. What are they going to hear? The voice of the Son of Man. Well, glory to God. And what are they going to do? Come out of that grave? Come out of that grave? In that day you shall ask me nothing. Praise God. So you got to understand, he said, Thou art my son this day. And another place it says, Today have I begotten thee. Well, glory. And he were, was not referring to just the singular flesh man of Jesus. He was speaking to a many-membered man. He was speaking to all the sons of God in the earth, saying, you are begotten of the Word in eternity. Can you hear that this morning? You are begotten of the Word in eternity. And then at the will of your Father, you were born of the Spirit. Can you say amen? Meaning you came out of Him. You came out from Him. Praise the Lord. I said, so why do you preach this way so much? Because I have to stay sure of who I am. I came out of Him. I came out from Him. Man can't live by bread alone, folks. He has to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He that cometh unto God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently. Oh, raise your hands and tell the Lord you want to seek Him diligently. Hallelujah. I don't want to sidestep anything. I don't want protection from those things I can't understand yet. Oh, glory. I don't want to be hid under a religion blanket and say, well, the great Almighty knows all. I won't be satisfied until I wait in His likeness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I believe I'll just go ahead and let it out this morning. I won't be satisfied till I don't have to attend another funeral. I won't be satisfied till I never have to go down another hospital hall. I won't be satisfied until my phone don't no longer ring telling me somebody's passed suddenly. I'll only be satisfied when I wake into a consciousness uh, that is filled with His image and His likeness. I'm pressing for that this morning. I got a lot of stuff I don't like, but I can't stay there long. Paul said, forgetting that which is behind me and reaching out unto that that is ahead of me. Hallelujah. I press towards the mark of the proud of the high calling of God. And we get down here in this scripture and the first thing we understand is that there's still a rest. Amen. There's still a rest. He said in Joshua, that the New Testament said Jesus, but the word translated there is Joshua talking about when he led them into the promised land. said if he had given them the real rest, then the Lord wouldn't have spoke again about another rest. But he said there still remained a place, glory to God, for us to get in where the Holy Ghost reveals glory to God the way it is. Look at verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God 
For he that is entered into his rest has ceased. Well, glory to God. From his own word. I want to quote another scripture there. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And say the rest of it with me, church. Lean not to thine own understanding. I want to make it very clear to you that there's no way for you to understand in the natural realm what is happening around you. That's glory. That's the reason he that enters in, the first thing he does, he ceases from trying to figure it out with his own understanding. Oh my God. But verse seven, 11 says, now he tells us cease, cease from our own work and then he turns right around and tells us to labor. Whoa. Come on. He says cease from your own works. Then the next verse says, let us labor. Strive. Push. Press. Well, glory to God. From the days of John the Baptist unto now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent. And then in another place, since these days the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth his way into it. Now listen to me for about 30 seconds here till I move on. You're being stretched and I am too. And we knew it was going to happen because the Lord had Chris get up here and start preaching on stretching. I don't want to be left in my comfort zone and enjoy a boring life. I want a life of supernatural signs and wonders. And in order for that to happen, I'm opening up myself to a vulnerability level that most won't ever experience. Because most of the world just takes it as it is and is satisfied. But there's a people call after His name that's decided it don't have to be this way. <laughs> and what are we going to do now? Labor, strive, press. Now here's the difference. Not to try to mentally figure out that world that is opposing the Word, such as death, sickness, poverty, pain, suffering. Listen to me. If we mentally try to well, glory to God, assess it. We're going to be mentally bound and tormented because, well, it's a hurtful place. But if we labor not to figure it out this way, but to enter into Him who's already got rest, let us labor also to enter into this rest. What's the rest of it? Lest any man should fall after the what? Same example of unbelief. What example of unbelief? No matter what God done for them, it weren't never enough. No matter what He done for them, they never could get it in their head that He was going to take care of them. Shoes that didn't wear out. Feet that didn't swell. Clothes that didn't grow old grew with their body. And then people eat like we do sometimes. I know them clothes took a stretching. And they didn't rip. And they didn't tear. Come on, say amen. amen. Glory to God. Woo. Quail till it run out their nose. Manna every morning. Rock poured out water. And that rock followed them. And that rock was Christ. And in all that they said, you know what they said, the psalmist told us what they said, can God, what? Furnish a table in the wilderness. And David come along and said, he prepared, not furnished, prepared, went before me. Told it. Didn't wait till I got out there and didn't have nothing. But before I ever got there, he went ahead of me. I dare you to start believing everything you enter into in this walk. 
God has already gone ahead of you and prepared a way. Oh, glory to God. What does the Bible say? There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common unto man. But God who is faithful will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able, but will with every temptation make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so he moves in now and tells us how this can come about in our own heart. Let that word be to you a sharp, two-edged sword. You ain't going to get nowhere without the word today, church. It takes the word to cut away. Oh, my God. And every time the word goes forth in power, it says it's quick. That don't mean it's fast. That means it's alive. It's full of life. Some folks read that and think preachers ought to just preach a few minutes, you know. Quick. Well, that ain't going to happen around here. It ain't never in all these years. But I can tell you what it means. It means it's alive with resurrection life. And it's powerful. Come on now. What is so powerful about it? It doesn't stay in the book. It doesn't remain on the page. It gets up off of that page. Walks right down here. Starts making some change. Come on now. And, and what does it do? It divides asunder the soul and the spirit. In other words, the Word gets you out of that intellectual, mental, emotional, sensual realm and puts you in a place of the spirit where you really know how to trust Him. And He said... It'll get in the joints and the marrow. It'll be a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Nothing will be hid from it. How many has let the word in just said, go through here. Just get in here and work. How many believe when you sing the word is working mightily in me that even when you lay down on your pillow every night and put this natural man to sleep, there's still a living, breathing, walking, talking word of the living God that is alive in you and bringing about a change. Glory to God. And it's working all the time. Amen. And then in verse 14, this is so consoling. Listen to it. Seeing that we have a great high priest. That ain't used no other way else in the Bible. They said high priest, priest, or Levi. The only great high priest, amen, is the Lord Jesus, our heavenly Melchizedek. Oh, praise the Lord. And he says, I love this next line. He has passed. Woo, glory. Not flew, not climbed. Not took a lifeboat. Come on now. There's no struggle in this. And there's no distance in it. I've come to tell you this morning, the Lord getting ready woo, to take the struggle out of it. And to take the distance out of it. There's no work in this line whatsoever. No fight. No struggle. It just says this high priest passed into the heavens. Do you understand that? Now, Jesus told Nicodemus no man had ever ascended into heaven. And I know that's grainy, but it's what the Word says. Except he which came from heaven and is in Come on now. Heaven. All right. You know as well as I do that every high priest stood in a realm of what? Meats and drinks. But the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And how many know Paul even predicted in the Roman church this meat and drink ministry because he prophesied of a people who would forbid to marry huh? and would abstain from meats and whose offerings stood in new moons and Sabbaths. 
And you yourself know the Roman church forbids their ministers to marry. And not so much now just in Lent, but they used to always eat fish on Friday yeah. because they forbid them to eat any meat. Right. Well, don't shout me down now. Hey Amen, oh me or oh my, because one of them's going to fit here this morning. Hey yeah. Amen, that old ministry was a struggle. Yeah. Death all day long in the outer court. Right. Come on four horns on the altar because when that fire hit that sacrifice it had jumped off of there so they had to tie it down. Come on. And they had to smell that flesh of burning. Amen. And then when you got in the uh, evening time glory to God always like that because David said let the lifting up of my hands be as the evening sacrifice. The morning sacrifice was all the death in the outer camp. But in the evening when that priest got washed up and cleaned up and anointed fresh, he'd go into a new altar. Instead of the altar of sacrifice, he came to the altar of incense. Could I tell some of you it's time for you to quit staring at the altar of sacrifice because one death was enough. Amen. Oh, I feel good all over more than anywhere else right now. I said one death was enough. One offering perfected forever. Glory to God. Them who are sanctified. I wish somebody would say amen this morning. How many of you understand that when you're out there in that doing round, it's the death round? Amen. You're constantly either toting ashes or restoking fires or trying, but in the evening, David said, he came to the Lord right in the middle of the day. And by the calendar day and by the, the sundial, it wasn't time for an evening sacrifice. It was time for a death sacrifice. But the Lord said he had no pleasure, glory, in burnt offerings and sacrifices of animals. But in Hebrews 13, we find out what he desired. Glory to God. Hereby let us offer up the sacrifice of what? Praise unto God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. Oh, praise Lord. I hope you're getting blessed as I am by this today. Because when you get out of the realm, oh, praise God of uh, doing and striving and trying to figure it all out and you just stand there in all faith that He's in control. Glory to God. And you lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting and you say right in the middle of the bright noon day when it should be a time of death and sacrifice, Lord, I'm tired of this sacrifice altar. Glory to God. I'm going to let the lifting up of my hands be as the evening sacrifice. I tell you, the Lord wants to change some of your altars this morning. You're seeing the altar as the place where everything has to die, but I'm going to tell you something. If you don't move beyond the cross, you ain't going to have the wholeness of it. Praise the Lord. You've got to move on to the next altar. That's the incense. Uh, that's worship. Instead of smelling like burnt flesh. Oh, hallelujah. It is a sweet smelling savor. It is the ascension offering. It's that that ascends. Are you ready? Glory to offer something to God that will cause you to ascend into a higher dimension of worship and of praise. Glory to God. Are you tired of praying them needy prayers? Could I preach just a few seconds here? Are you tired of always carrying a burden? Are you ready to let that ascend up unto God and join heaven's intercession in Revelation chapter 8? And while all that's going on, you are standing there calmly with your hands up as an eating and sacrifice. My Lord. This great high priest passed. 
past. Past. Now, the Bible says as long as the old tabernacle stood, it was evidence that the way was not yet revealed of how to get in to the holiest of all. Praise the Lord. I mean, I uh, will uh, uh, we'll back that up with Scripture because the 8th chapter says there's a true tabernacle that the Lord pitched and not man. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm tired of talking in that realm. Oh yes, I'm ready to lean not to mine own understanding. Yes. I'm like you. I try to figure it out and can't. Yes. But I also know if I try too long, I'll have insanity on my hands. Yes. So what do I have to do? I have to move on deeper. Yes. have to yes. pursue. Right. You're not giving up. You're pursuing. Yes. You're Well, glory to God. Yes. Amen. Yes. And listen now. With these words in Hebrews 9. I know I'm all over the place, but you know I, this stuff just is linked together. You, some of it you can't have one without the other. Yeah. Hebrews 9 verse 6 says, When these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle of comforts in the service of God, but in the second went to high priest along once every year not without blood which he offered for himself for the errors of the people. What's that verse 8 said? The Holy Ghost signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was yet standing. Come on somebody. Which was a figure for time then present in which, now the key the word there is then, it was a figure for them then, come on now, that in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. No matter how God accepted the offering, no matter how much fire fell, he still woke up the next day wondering if he was good enough, wondering if he was holy enough, wondering now what he could do to please God. Come on, somebody. That conscience, I don't care how much you go to church, how much time you give, how many times you go through the prayer line, until you come into this rest of of God, you'll still go home and war in your mind over whether you're really born again and over whether God accepts you or not. My God. Yeah. Hallelujah. It stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings uh, and carnal ordinances uh, imposed on them until something happened. Uh, and that something is right there in that tenth verse. A reformation. Glory to God forever. A reformation. Somebody came that could do more than talk about changing it. Glory to God. They actually did something about it. <laughs> oh my God. Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. Hallelujah. What did he do? neither by the blood of bulls and goats and calves, uh, but by His own blood He entered in. Once! Somebody please say once was enough. Oh, say that one more time. Once was enough. Somebody tell me what kind of redemption He obtained. Eternal. Well, glory. Whew. With the blood of bulls and goats, the ashes, the heaven, the sprinkling, the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot unto God, do what? Purge your conscience from dead works. Look at me and listen carefully. All that war you do, am I accepted? 
And do I have power? Do I have the real Holy Ghost? Is this me? Why am I? And everybody goes through that when they walk in that car. Around. All every bit of that, every bit of that yeah. is dead works. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the church calls it humility. Yeah. But it ain't humble. It's death. Yeah. It's a death consciousness. No matter what you do or how much you do, you still feel unworthy yeah. when you come in His presence. Right. That's got to go. Amen. And the way it goes is by you coming into this new and living way and learning how to pray throne room prayers. Not little churchy religious prayers that sound good when the orator reads them. Yeah. Now, what a pretty prayer. That is not the purpose of prayer, no. to be pretty. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless your darling hearts. Some of the praying I've done in my lifetime could have never been described as pretty. Yep. Yeah. Birthing mm -hmm. is not always well, glory. A quiet little beautiful moment. I'd like for you to get a picture in your mind, a little rispa. Glory. One of the concubines of Saul. And somebody had came up with the idea that they should hang their five sons. Hallelujah. They weren't all her sons, but they were somebody's sons. And they would not take them boys down and give them a proper burial. But they left them hanging on the gallows day and night. And the vultures was trying to eat their flesh. And Rizpa went down there and took her shawl off, her cloak off, Oh, glory. And said, I'll not let these vultures eat the flesh of these boys. And day and night, and day and night, oh, my God. Have you ever just got to that place? I mean, if you'd have come up on her, she had wore silk and satin, lived in the palace, was one of the concubines of the king. But if you'd have caught her out there after she'd been about three weeks, the Bible said she gave no bread to her mouth, neither gave she sleep to her eyes. You wouldn't have seen a silky satin little princess. You'd have seen a wild-eyed lioness. Oh, praise God who had went into a garden mode. Amen. And somebody ran, oh, have you ever prayed till you got so bold you didn't care who hurt you? Have you ever got to the place at any cost you was going to have what you went after? Somebody say, praise the Lord. I come over here one day, it wasn't a whole lot then, now I have to Amen. We won't talk about what all amounts I have to believe for now, but back then, I was a little young married evangelist struggling on the road, and I needed $200 so bad. $200 these days just scratches your eyebrow, you know, but in them days, it really runs something, and I had to have it, and I didn't have it. I didn't have a nickel. I didn't have a penny. And I came over here and locked myself in this church and did some of that ribs for praying. I didn't care how loud I got. I didn't care if I squalled or bawled. I didn't care if I laid down, stood up. I did all of it. I walked. I rolled. I laid. I stood. Come on, somebody. My God, the trouble with the church at this hour is we've got the attention span of a commercial break, and that's when we do our praying. Hallelujah. All right, we better go eat dinner. We got the attention span of a commercial break, and that's how long we want God to move. Don't interrupt our normal normality. 
you won't have no move you're seeking for until you are ready to get some things interrupted. Can you say amen? I mean, he passed into the heavens. Your great high priest. Come on now. Found, glory to God, founded that new covenant and then opened up the way for the rest of us to come on in to that place in him. Oh, my Father. Amen. And somebody went and said, David, Rizpah, the concubine of Saul, been down there. Oh, hallelujah. How long she been? Weeks and weeks. Praise the Lord. Said she ain't eat. She ain't slept. What's the matter with her? Said she's a beaten. The vultures. That's trying to get the flesh of them five sons. David said, My God, go get them down and give them a burial. Yeah. She got what she wanted. Come on, somebody. She passed the place of inhibition, holding back. Hmm. It wasn't a time to question and wonder. It was a time to act and she done it. Yeah. Now how many of you are going to get God's word in you till when he says act? You'll just do it. He passed. Where? Into the heavens. Who? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So what are we going to do now? Hold fast. Ooh. To what? Our profession. Profession is a Greek word that means you come in agreement with. You get in agreement with the fact that if he passed into that realm, you and I must pass into that realm of all power, all dominion, all authority. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Well, glory. Are you dead or just thinking this morning? Just soaking it in. I can take that. I can't take the other, but I can take it if you're just meditating and getting ministered to by the Lord. I mean, are you ready to pass? Yeah. Pass on by all the scoffers. Pass on yeah. by them sons of the prophets that said, don't you know the Lord is going to yeah. take your master away? Yes, I know it, but I also know before he goes, I'm getting over there in that round, getting me a double portion of that glory. Now, profession. Uh, he's the high priest and the apostle of our profession, says Hebrews 3 1. Praise God. I would never leave the Bible open to Hebrews because uh, it's a teaching book. Amen. And I've got a whole uh, commentary. You might say wrote on the book of Hebrews, and it's edited and or it's uh, uh, edited and needs, or it's been revised, and it needs to be uh, gotten to the publishers or whatever. Maybe this is a good way for the Lord to spark me to get back busy on it, get it out, and get it done. Amen. But uh, he says we have not a high priest. Which now listen to this. He's there. Everybody say he's there. He's there. But at the same time he's there, he's here. Yeah. He's omnipresent. Yeah. He's everywhere at once. Yeah. He's there yet he's here. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He's there, meaning he's in that spirit realm. Mm -hmm. Now he's there don't mean he's beyond the Milky Way over oh, there and you gotta get convincing to help you. He's there. There's a there and there's a here. I hope I can say this this way and you understand. But the there and the here is here. Can you handle that? He's there and he's here. But the there and the here is here. Amen. And so he said, we have him who cannot be what? Touched. Oh, listen, church, you can touch it. You can touch it. You can touch it. You can touch it. Glory to God. Get that settled right now. There's a way to make contact. There's a way for you to lay hold. 
There's a way for you to become one with, to be a part of. He is touched, come on now, yeah. with the feeling. <clears throat> yeah, you may, you may not understand this, but not the whining, not the complaining, mm -hmm. the feeling. Beyond all the whining and complaining, there is a true heartfelt cry in you over any situation that you're dealing with. When you push all the meanness out of the way, because I'm, you know, I'm like you, and I don't like something. I'm, I, I, and especially, you know, when people do you wrong or mis, mis, misjudge you or whatever, and you gotta, you know, you gotta get all that surface stuff out of the way, all that meanness. Hello. But when all that meanness passes, how many know you've got a true heartfelt burden yeah. for that person yeah. and you want God to change it? Yeah. He's touched by that. He ain't touched by your complaining yeah. and your whining yeah. or mine, vice versa. He's not touched by our just suggestions. <coughs> well, glory. That ain't what touches Him. Yeah. What touches Him is the real feeling yeah. on the inside of you. Do you want this thing bad enough? Do you want it to change? It's, oh my God. Because you've got to seek you the Lord while He what? May be found, call you upon Him while He is near, and seek Him how? Early. Now early doesn't necessarily mean 4.30 in the morning, because quite frankly, if I talked to God at 4.30 in the morning, it would be God, because I don't talk to nobody at 4.30 in the morning usually. I usually don't even know who I am at 4.30 in the morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And some folks are right different. That's when they're spry and springy and alert. My wife's that way. She's very alert in the morning and, and, and can get the most of what she needs done in that morning hour. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't mind that as long as uh, I don't mind uh, doing it in the morning early I just uh, have, takes a few minutes to process what needs to be done for a few minutes. Hey, Amen. I have to get my head shook loose, you know. But sometimes at midnight hour, I'm so sharp in my uh, mind until I can get these messages from the Lord and go to bed, amen, sometime 2 o'clock and then get up, amen, come here and deliver the Word of the Lord. That's just when... I, it, it works for me some, but all of that, hallelujah, all of that, you have to get in that in that early part. That is David saying, don't wait till it all falls apart and then, I hope I can say this without hurting anybody's feelings, out of a surface view, start getting stirred up. Because a lot of times, that's not your real heart getting stirred up. That's fear yeah. and worry. That ain't the time to let it stir you. Right. The time to let it stir you is when these deep movings of the Spirit are going forth. Can you say amen? Yeah. He's touched with the feeling yeah. of our infirmity. Yeah. And most people interpret that to mean they waited till the midnight hour yeah. when it all fell apart. And they ain't really feeling it because tomorrow they'll go right back to the same old way. Yeah. But tonight, since it looks bad, yeah. is this okay? Yeah. Oh, they're really crying out. Yeah, but are you going to cry after you shut up? Is there something in you going to still be crying? Yeah. Praying without ceasing? Is something in you even when you're going to go to bed tonight? You'll feel that yearning inside you. God, I thank you for raising them up. Lord, I praise you for touching them right now. God, I thank I'm talking about after all that fear leaves and all that surface is gone. He's touched with that feeling. That, whoa, glory to God. Uh, Hannah can pray without words. Glory to God. She can pray with, and her soul magnify the Lord. Amen. And then he says, because he's touched with a feeling. I didn't get nowhere, but I've got a few verses in it. Now. He said what? He said, let us. Now then he's beckoning us to pass just like he did. Oh, hallelujah. I said, now he's calling unto us 
to pass like he did beyond the veil into what did he say let us therefore come Woo. how boldly now boldly means in your speech it means to speak plainly Isaiah said, the Lord said, command ye me. Yeah. Well, glory. Another place he said, where put me in remembrance. Remembrance of what? What I said. My word. Yeah. My promises. Yeah. Let us come boldly. Let us come and speak yeah. openly. And I'm closing. But I wanted you to know and until you get to the place where you begin to speak openly with the Father, yeah. all this other mess has got to go. Hallelujah. Amen. I ain't willing to walk when I can ride. I ain't willing to do without when I can have. Hello. And I don't mind to tell you, sometime I go home and tell the Lord I didn't like that. I didn't like it a bit and I still don't like it. Some of y'all won't do that, and some people can't pray for every time they're praying. Oh, Father, if it be thy will, as if he, as if one little wrong word would make him not do yeah. what he said he'd do. Yeah. That's why we're so hung up because of this false humility teaching in the church. Yes. My God, what if your wife said, "Honey, now you can just walk." <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can just walk. It won't hurt you to walk. Be willing to walk. I'd like to see what you are. Some of you, well, I better say what if you heard because we got more women than we have men in here. I know what you ladies are saying. Buddy, if you want to walk, help yourself. But I got keys and an air conditioner. Now, I want to put it in perspective of that when I want to say to you, my God, it's got to get to the point where when you say, well, uh, Lord, if he's not willing, take him. No! I'm not willing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If they want to pass over, I don't care. But let them get healed first. Let them get well first. It ain't God's will that any one of his children have to leave this earth laying in a bed with cords and tubes and coming out of them on every side. In the will of God that if a man's going to go or a woman's going to go to glory, they can just lie down and pull their feet up in that bed like the old prophet did and go on home. Hallelujah. Don't tell me God wills for it to be a way of suffering and torment, and pain, and sorrow, and woe. We get to the point where we love them so much. Huh? We have to pray. We have to use our faith the other way because it tires our heart out of us to see them suffer like that. But how many believe God's raising up an army of resurrection and life in this earth that, brother, when we realize that he said unto us that great high priest said unto us now you come on and pass this way just like i did oh sit here where i sit and get the same profession and agreement that i have and began to come boldly oh what did he say you'll do obtain and find you're going to find grace you're going to obtain mercy and it's going to help you. Listen to what he said. When did, does he say it helps? In the time of what need. No, glory to God. I'll tell you when you're in that time when you need it. Have you ever told the Lord, I need you now. I need something to happen now. Oh, I have. I've said, Lord, I don't need to wait 30 minutes. I don't need to hear from you next week. I need to hear from you today. I need them now. How many believe if we'll pass on in like Jesus passed on in and become that high priest who sits in that realm of power and authority, then we will have it when we need it. 
we'll have it when we need it. Now let me say this, be careful that after something goes, blows over and finally things get back to what we call normal, if that is such a word, I don't know if there's a normal in God. Hallelujah. They ain't this weekend. Well, I'll tell you more about next week, but I don't know if things are normal in God, but if we're not careful, we'll when things get back, you know, quiet, we'll settle right down in that hole till the next thing. I don't want to do that. I want to pass this morning out of this dimension into another round. Everybody let's stand up and thank Him today. Hallelujah. Oh my. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. I believe I could preach that seven more times and get something out of it every time. I, <laughs> oh Lord, don't let me settle. Don't let me sell out. Abraham was a sojourner. Don't you know his wife came to him time and time again and said, Abraham, please, Lord, can't we settle here? Can't we build here? Can't we stop here? He said, no, I'm looking for a city. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. Which have foundation whose builder and maker is God. We learn out later that the foundation of that city is the apostles and prophets. And that we make up the rest of it. We're set on a hill and we can't be hid. That city, New Jerusalem's a bride. Glory to God. And I'm telling you this morning, you weren't made to just roll with it. Amen. You were made to be the one who can stand up and say, why roll what ain't right? Let us rise up and enter in to the place of prayer and supplication and intercession be made for all saints and all places, for kings and for governors and for those who are in authority. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. The president asked the whole country to pray together for the American victims in Texas. And when the world leader, according to the word, we're supposed to do what? When they ask that, we're supposed to pray for it. Doesn't matter what you think about the man. And all you people that bad mouth government ought to read the Bible. The Bible said you're not supposed to speak against anyone who is in authority. I don't necessarily like everything I behold, but the worst thing you can become is a bigot who makes everybody listen to your political views. And I don't believe politics belongs in the church no way. But I do think we ought to just thank the Lord for taking care of all them people as all the other churches join together and we thank you, Lord, for every person who has donated help to them people. Lord, you've even made them movie stars come out and start giving to them millions of dollars. But give them more than just money, God. Give them faith that they can rebuild and have a life again. Give them joy in the midst of it all. Give them peace. Give them comfort. And Lord, help these dear American people to keep yeah. their mouth off of the preachers. Yeah. Lord, these men of God. Yeah. Lord God, just let all that cease. Yeah. Let all that die down, Lord. Yeah. We want you to know we don't criticize them, Father. We honor them. Yeah. We bless them. Yeah. And we thank God for everyone you've got there in that area. And we ask you to prosper them. And bring them forth as gold. Hallelujah. Amen. Move tonight and give us a wonderful time in the Spirit. Anoint the woman of God as she brings a word to us. Amen. Bless these families, Lord, that are dealing with the passion of love. And bless uh, Sister Joanne. Amen. And touch her in her body, God. Lord, she needs a miracle. Give her one, Lord. 
Amen. Heal her legs, God. Let her have. Amen. Uh, uh, the pain leave her now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord bless Cricket today. God give that girl rest. Oh, I pray every time she lies down, she'll go into her sweet heavenly sleep. And every time she rises up, she'll feel refreshed. Amen. And made whole and rejuvenated in her body. Bless us all with a praying spirit. <laughs> oh, Lord, bless us all with a praying heart uh, in Jesus' name. I thank you for it. Amen. I bless all of you today. Thank you for being here. Don't forget the service tonight at 6 o'clock. Amen. Bless you all. Love you.